want you to know that you don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith in God. And in all thy getting, get understanding. Hey, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before your throne of grace to obtain mercy, mercy for the day. Thank you, O God, for blessing us with this new day. We are grateful. We are grateful for all that you have done and still doing in our lives. Now, it's nothing of me and Lord, everything of you. I'm just a servant of you to bring your word to your people. Holy Spirit, Bless your people, help them to understand, bring them to the place of understanding that we may increase. Satan, take your dirty hands off your people so they can hear the word of God, for that it is written, is written. We thank you, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you are just joining me, this is Patrick Quino, I'm bringing you. Faith moment, a platform where you come to increase your faith by the word of God, so you can you can flow with God and flow with the clouds. Hallelujah, Amen, Amen. We started a series um, on the the graces, what I call the graces of the Holy Spirit, the graces of the Holy Spirit, and uh, <clears throat> beloved, it's very important that um, your understanding of the word of God will cause you and lead you to increase and not be afraid. All right? Your understanding. Listen, um, <clears throat> I think it's about time that I I re-emphasize on the fact that um, uh, we are living a practical Christian life and not some theory, somewhere that we, we, don't, we believe something that is far away. But yet, like somebody used to say, um, don't be heavenly minded and earthly no good. Are you listening? Don't be heavenly minded and earthly no good. We are on this earth. God knows why um, it was important for him to send the Holy Spirit to us to help us in all that we have to do in our life on this earth until the time where we have to either depart or uh, we meet him face to face. All right. And so we've been talking about the fact that um, the Holy Spirit, um, the person of the Holy Spirit is here. <clears throat> now, I believe that you have stopped saying that something told me, something told me. No, it's the Holy Spirit. He has a name. His name is the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said that he has to send the Holy Spirit to us to help us in every area of our lives. Why? Because he lives back to the Father after his finished work concerning you and me. Now, you remember that, uh, that the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus himself. Are you listening? The Holy Spirit came upon Jesus himself. And so Jesus received the Holy Spirit to do the things that he was able to do. Now, let me acknowledge some of you who have come on the platform this morning. I salute all of you in Jesus' name. Uh, Kujo, Kujo, my good friend, Afienya. I hope you are still a good friend. <laughs> Allison, God bless you. Uh, Kenneth, Kenneth, God bless you, all of you. Do me a favor, tag somebody, tag somebody, uh, invite somebody on this platform. Let them know that Faith Movement with um, Reverend Queno is here alive, bringing you practical messages for your practical daily life and living as a believer. I'm tired, of, listen, I'm really tired and sick and tired of seeing Christians struggling. Why? Because we lack the understanding of God's word. We lack the understanding. And that is what is causing you and I to, you know, fall into the, the system of this world and not understanding how they play their game. All right? If you, because, listen, Jesus says that uh, the, the world do not know the Holy Spirit. So if the world knows the Holy Spirit, they will, they will do things differently. Now, you as a child and a believer, you are... You know the Holy Spirit, Jesus said that. You know the Holy Spirit. Now, so you, you have to have an understanding that living in this world uh, without the Holy Spirit, you're going to play the game of the world. 
And um, you better know how to play it. Because the world is controlled by Satan. All right? If nobody has told you this, let me just tell you that. All right? According to Rev. John the Revelator, he revealed to us that after the, the war that broke out in heaven, Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 down, all right, that Satan was cast down to the earth. And now he is here with his um, angels, almost one third of the angels that follow him down here. And he is, Jesus even acknowledged him as the prince of the air, the prince of this air. And so you have to understand who is in charge of this atmospheric world or at atmospheric, uh, you know, glue. Are you listening to me? Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4 will tell you who is in charge of this area. And uh, this very person is really making sure that a lot of people don't come to uh, know who God is. <clears throat> Are you listening? So it's very important for you to understand as a believer, as a child of God. Now, that aside, let me come bring you back to the word of the day. And um, we started yesterday concerning these three elements or three, what I call the three, the graces of the Holy Spirit. We've been dealing, if you've been following this segment, if, if not, then please go to the website uh, or go to the YouTube and get most of the, the, um, the messages. It's going to help you. The three graces of the Holy Spirit, faith, hope, and love. Faith, hope, and love. Listen, now these three ingredients of your life, you're going to need it once you are on this earth. You're going to need it here until eternity. You're going to need it. And this is for your everyday life. And uh, we started talking with the first area of the three ingredients. Are you listening? The Bible tells us that these three um, eternal qualities of the Holy Spirit uh, will be with us forever. Will be with us forever as long as we are on this earth. And so you have to have that understanding that you're going to need faith. You're going to need hope. And you're going to need love. This is for your uh, practical daily life and living. This is not for just your church service uh, on Sundays. Are you listening? Christianity is for every day. It's not for Sundays alone. Don't get this thing twisted. That you have to be, you know, as a matter of fact, if you try to be all that spiritual on Sundays, you're just acting religiously. And by the way, Christianity is not a religion. Are you listening? And so let us get this thing straight and... Um, uh, be able to have an understanding and live a happy life and live a glorious life and live a sweat free life. And our qualities of the Holy Spirit that are forever, all right? These three graces, I call them, of the Holy Spirit, we need to give attention to these things in our lives, okay? Even as we prepare for the great day when we're going to stand before our Maker in eternity. Are you listening? Important that we do understand uh, this fact. So yesterday we ended up with the sixth um, steps or the sixth area, which um, is the um, the confidence that we have in God. Faith gives us confidence in God. Faith gives us confidence in God. So our confidence is in God. Faith gives us confidence in God, and we saw that in Ephesians. The third chapter, the 12th verse, faith gives us confidence in God. This is for your daily life and practical living. Faith gives us confidence in God. Beloved, the world is full of challenges, 
chaos and all kinds of things put it together and so if you don't have faith in God for God's Spirit the Holy Spirit to help you as Jesus sent him to do to help us you will be in the place or you'll be at the mercy of the systems of this earth of this world and um, you will you will not you will not be able to um, enjoy life are you listening yes you will not be able to enjoy life so you need to plug your faith in God and have your confidence in him have your confidence in him so that the Holy Spirit will then connect with you because the Spirit of God in you connects with the, with, with the Holy Spirit all right for the Holy Spirit who is our helper in this time in this world in this dispensation to help you in every area of your life so Ephesians 3 the 12th verse says that faith gives us confidence or we have our confidence in God <clears throat> now uh, faith also faith is faith also see the unseen faith also see the unseen are you listening your faith in God will let you see the unseen Hebrews 11 chapter verse 1 the scripture says that now faith is faith is now 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 all right you see the practical life I'm talking about your practic practical daily life and living your Christian practical daily life faith is now beloved faith is now faith is not tomorrow faith is not yesterday faith is not next week faith is now are you listening faith is now now faith is now faith is the substance of the things you hope for the substance of the things you hope for okay the evidence of the things now see the substance of the things you hope for now today we're going to start in the subject of hope all right faith brings us into hope so now let's go into hope and see all right the three the three graces of the holy spirit we've, we've finished talking about faith okay finished talking about faith let me end up with you going to the book of jude okay jude go with me to jude chapter um chapter one all right jude jude is only just just one chapter by the way all right jude jude go to book of jude jude chapter one verse 20 but you beloved let me read that real quick for you but you be you but you there's a comma there it means there's a continuation but you you beloved there's another comma there you but you beloved oh boy you see you see god don't make miss no words and he knows specifically who he's talking to but you beloved building yourselves up on your most holy faith praying in the holy spirit but you beloved building yourselves up on your most holy faith building yourselves up in your most holy faith build yourself up in your most holy faith build yourselves up in your most holy faith build yourselves up in your most holy faith without faith it's impossible to for you to please god praying in the holy spirit you got to pray in the holy spirit you got to pray in the holy spirit pastor how do i pray in the holy spirit well be baptized in the holy spirit and have uh, the holy spirit lead you into that direction you've got to be baptized in the holy spirit before coming to this program this morning i'm dealing with some uh two guys on on the um on the messengers communicating back and forth and my question is have you been baptized in the holy spirit and they said no but they're christians and struggling well how are you going to not be baptized in the holy spirit and um expect that things are just going to be smooth for you whilst the helper of your life of this practical daily life you live your helper is standing there just looking and waiting for you to engage him and so we got to be baptized in the holy spirit and praying in the holy spirit but but you verse 20 jude chapter 1 verse 20 again 
but you beloved building yourselves up in your most holy faith praying in the Holy Spirit praying in the Holy Spirit 21 says keep yourselves in the love of God looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life so you see that it says keeping yourselves in the love of God that is the third area of the uh, the three graces of the Holy Spirit will be talking about um, not today today we are entering into the area of hope all right the area of hope now we ended up with faith in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 now faith is now faith is the substance of the things we hope for now let's get into the area of hope now these are the things you need in your life I'm giving you information of the things you need in your life for you to live your daily practical life as a Christian okay now hope is looking on to Jesus now uh, Hebrews 12 chapter 12 verse 2 looking on to Jesus looking on to Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith looking on to Jesus not looking on to your government not looking on to anybody but looking on to Jesus all right, turn with me now to Hebrews, the um, the twelfth chapter. Hebrews, the twelfth chapter. Glory be to God. Hebrews, the twelfth chapter. Look at verse two. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God looking unto Jesus looking unto Jesus beloved the Bible says looking unto Jesus not looking unto the system of this world the world do not know the Holy Spirit Jesus says in John chapter 14 verse 17 the world do not know the Holy Spirit so look unto Jesus the author and the finisher of your faith okay now faith is the substance of the things you hope for so we'll be looking into the area of hope now okay so go with me now all right go with me now to uh, first timothy chapter 1 verse 1 first timothy chapter 1 verse 1 jesus is the source of our hope jesus is the source of our hope jesus not the system of this world okay not the connections you think you have let me tell you, see, see uh, you, you, I am speaking from experience, okay? I'm speaking from experience, just practical experience of my Christian life that I, I once, okay, was foolish enough to think that the connections, the, 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 the people that I knew in some governmental, you know, places, you know, and all those uh, offices and all that, could assist me and you know, help me to, uh, you know, increase my business and all that. But beloved, by the end of the day, I fell flat on my face, lost a lot of money because these were not people where my hope was. But you see, you got so engraved in some of the things you do, sometimes you forget yourself. And that is why you got to be very, very careful about the fact that when you have entered the world to do business, you have to understand that the world do not know the Holy Spirit. And so when you have entered, as I'm talking to you as a business person, you enter into that place with a heart, you know, a different heart of, uh, you know, of God. Well, these people don't know nothing about the Holy Spirit that is in you. And the way they have to, you know, treat you and that kind of stuff. Are you listening to me? So I, I, I'm a witness to, to the scripture. All right, lost a lot of money, lost serious money. And I'm, I'm not talking about some chicken change. Why? Because I was dealing with people, I was dealing with the world that do not know the Holy Spirit. And so whilst I'm in there with a mindset of wanting to do good, well, that's not the way they were approaching me. Are <laughs> you listening to me? So I sit back and the Lord gave me the opportunity to look back and say, oh, wow. Oh, wow. And so now I understand what Jesus meant that said that the world do not know the Holy Spirit. 
And so if you, listen, and because you are living in this world, Jesus said we are in this world, but we are not of this world. And so you have to know how to live your life in this world as a Christian. Because the world you are living in, the world do not know your helper. The world don't know your helper. Are you listening to me? So if you don't engage your helper in your daily life and living, you are going to get yourself, okay, lured into the way the system operates. And by the end of the day, you're going to be destroyed. I'm, I'm telling you this. If you don't have to believe me, just go ahead and try. And then bring me the results later. <laughs> Amen. So Jesus is your source of hope. Are you listening? First Timothy chapter 1 verse 1. Now the Bible also says that it is written, all right, Bible was written to give us hope. Bible, this scripture that we are reading, okay, it was written. The scripture is an inspired word of God. It was written to give us hope in God. The Bible is was written to give us hope in God. Okay, if you go to a Romans, the 15th chapter, the fourth verse, you see that there. Okay, write the scriptures down, beloved, and uh, read it and read it and read it. Remember yesterday we spoke about the fact that faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. That is also in Romans chapter 10 verse 17. Okay, faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. So your faith will come alive when you keep hearing the word of God. It's very, very important for you to understand. Okay, now... So Romans 15 verse 4 tells us that the scripture was written or given to us to give us hope. Hope in what? Hope in God. Praise God. All right. Now, the second coming of Jesus or the second coming of, look at, go with me to Titus chapter 2 verse, verse uh, 13. Uh, Titus chapter 2 verse 13. All right. I want to show you something there. Titus chapter 2 verse 13 <clears throat> praise god thank you jesus titus chapter 2 verse 13 if you are there quickly let me show you something what is very important whilst you are reading uh you are trying to get it let me just um, uh read something to you the second coming of jesus is called the blessed hope that is what i want to i want to talk to you tell you about the second coming of jesus is called the blessed hope now the hope we have in looking forward to his coming is very important. Now, I've, I've told you time and again, don't live your life, though you are, on, you are in, this, in this world, but you are not of this world, okay? It's like, again, I use the example of um, traveling from one state to the other, however you stay in a hotel. To continue to your final destination now whilst you are in the hotel you don't live your life as your final destination you live your life knowing that well two days or three days or whatever time days you stay in a hotel because it's not your permanent place you are going to be moving on and therefore you don't live your life in the hotel as though that is your permanent place of of living uh, okay and so this is the same with this world you know that this is not you we are pre, we are pilgrims passing through this earth now one will ask a question why did god put us on this earth for you and i to fulfill an assignment what assignment it is if you haven't find out about your assignment then you need to find out what your assignment is everybody has an assignment Jesus at the age of 12 knew exactly what his assignment was. All right, Jesus exactly at age of 12 knew exactly what his assignment was. So you and I are on this earth to fulfill an assignment. Now, this is not our permanent place. Okay, so when you are staying in a hotel, you don't stay in a hotel like your permanent, permanent house or your permanent place. And that's exactly the way we are living our lives on this earth. Are you listening to me? So you need then to have that understanding and to know how to direct your path by the help of the Holy Spirit. Beloved, if you don't engage the Holy Spirit, you're going to, you, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know any other way to tell you this. You don't engage the, the Holy Spirit and you don't, I mean, think about it. Think, you know, I've been pondering on this thing for some time that 
You know, John the Baptist was baptizing everybody for the repentance of their sins in water. He mentioned them in water. All right. John the Baptist says to the people that he was baptizing that there will be another person, there will be another person coming after him who is mightier than he, John the Baptist, of who he, John the Baptist, was not even qualified to untie, to bow down and untie his sandals. Now, we see that Jesus also came to be baptized, for which John engaged him in a conversation. What I mean, whoa, 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 you've come for me to baptize you. I need to be baptized by you. Now, Jesus said that, John, let this be so, so that the scripture will be fulfilled. Let it be, let this happen for now, so that scripture will be fulfilled. Now, Jesus is the one John the Baptist was talking about. Now, Jesus was baptized. And when he was come, Bible says he was come out of the water, as everybody around there who was baptized, you know, did, all right, the Holy Spirit came, descended upon him, in the form of a dove and the heavens declare behold this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased listen to him and obey him or and all that now so we see that the holy spirit came upon jesus now watch this in john chapter 4 verse 1 continue he says now the spirit after the holy spirit has come upon him the spirit then led him into town into the wilderness <laughs> all right to go and fast wait on the lord for directions and there the holy spirit he led him there and the, the, the satan came to tempt him and all this and all that because in this world satan is in charge of this atmospheric world according to second corinthians chapter 4 verse 4 all right so he's like oh welcome mr nice guy let us see let us see what you're going to do all right and then he tried to tempt him in so many areas beloved i keep telling you this Satan tempts, God tests, don't twist the two, God tests, God does not tempt, scripture says God doesn't tempt no one, God tests, Satan tempts, and so Satan tempted him, and through it all, he could not bow, are you listening to me, all Jesus said was, it is written, it was written, what was written, was written, cannot be changed, now, what I want to emphasize here is the fact that the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus. Then Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit. Jesus didn't take himself to go there. He was led by the Holy Spirit. And now the Holy Spirit is now helping Jesus and operating through Jesus for Jesus to do all the things he was able to do that the disciples were not able to do until Jesus finished his ministry in three years. And uh, after his resurrection, which he told them it was going to happen, that they did not even believe, but they saw that it was real, what he said. Well, he had to go back to the Father for, where, for whence he came. Now, Jesus don't need the Holy Spirit in heaven. Jesus didn't need the Holy Spirit in heaven. Now, whilst Jesus was on this earth, listen to this very carefully. Whilst Jesus was on this earth, okay, the Holy Spirit descended upon him. For he, Jesus, to be able to do all that his assignment was on this earth. As you, the believer, I just told you that every one of us have an assignment on this earth. The only way you're going to be able to fulfill this assignment is by the help of the Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord. Are you getting the revelation here? So Jesus received the Holy Spirit on this earth. Now, listen to Jesus. Listen to Jesus in John chapter 14, verse 16. When he was about to depart, he says, I will pray the Father to send you the Holy Spirit. <laughs> to send you the Holy Spirit. So wait until the Holy Spirit has come. Before you go out, and start your assignment. Wait. Now, beloved, what does that tell you? And yet Jesus says, when he comes, he will help you in every area of your life. So why are we then going around struggling, 
challenges here, there, and there, left, right, and center. Why are you even even fighting each other? Yeah, because we lack the ability to understand what we have and first of all who we are. We lack the understanding. If you don't know who you are, you'll be fighting everybody thinking that you should be the first person. You know, when we, like somebody says, where were you when we were we? That is exactly what the, 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 the Pharisees and the scribes and the, and the Sadducees were, you know, the, the preachers of the den was, were, 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 were uh, dealing with Jesus. Where were you? How dare you say this? How, do, how dare you raise the sick? How dare you raise, raise the dead? How dare you open the blind eyes? How dare you? How dare you? We were here before you came when we still have those Pharisees and the Sadducees in our time. <clears throat> Why? Because they haven't, they haven't come to that place of understanding who they are in, in God. Are you listening? So Jesus says, I don't need the Holy Spirit in heaven. So I'm going to send him to you to help you. Now, beloved, if Jesus, who had the Holy Spirit, was on earth, is telling you and I that we need the Holy Spirit to help us in every area of our lives, then why are we not embracing the Holy Spirit, accepting the Holy Spirit, engaging the Holy Spirit, but rather going around and struggling? Why? Think about it. Why? Now, whether you are a business person, whether you are a doctor, you are a nurse, whatever you are, I mean, it doesn't matter. Whatever, whatever you find yourself doing on this earth, what if you say you are a Christian, a follower of Christ, <laughs> a follower of Christ, without the Holy Spirit engaged in your life, how do you, how far do you think you can go? Beloved, let me say this and say that I will continue. This particular race, I keep saying it, is not for the swift. Mm -mm. It's not for the swift. And beloved, just, just take this good advice real fast. Stop living in past glories. Stop. It's, it's past, it's gone. This is a new day. Understand what you didn't understand before. All right, so that you can you can mount up with wings like the eagles and fly. <laughs> Glory be to God. I just spoke. I just spoke to somebody. I don't know who you are. All right. So now, <laughs> let's get back to business. Hope. The three graces of the Holy Spirit. We have just finished talking about faith, hope, and then we'll get to love. So we are in the area of hope. So now, hope, hope. Now the Bible was written to give us hope and again in Romans chapter 15 verse 4 all right and uh, we have hope in the second coming um, of our Lord which is called the blessed hope the blessed hope okay the blessed hope in uh, um, the blessed hope in Titus chapter 2 verse 1 all right now look at first Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 8 First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 8. Hope, hope is an armor of the believer. Hope is, is part of the armor, part of the weapons that the believer has. Why do we need hope? Well, without hope, you don't have nothing to. You have nothing to hope for. You have nothing to hope for. You have nothing to hope for. Do you think you have life? That's lifeless. Okay? If you don't believe me when you see any dead person, just ask them. <laughs> Once they are lying down dead and everybody crying around them, ask them, do they have hope for life? They will tell they, If they can answer you, then you will, you will know. Hope for life. What is hope? Hope for life. Don't throw in the towel whilst you are alive, beloved. There's still hope. There's still hope. We have faith for today. We have hope for tomorrow. We have faith for today. Faith for today to do what? Faith to live a practical Christian life. And we have hope for tomorrow. 
Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Glory be to God. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. All my fears are gone. Hallelujah. Oh my goodness, I love that song. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. And now I know, now I know, now I know, now, now, now. He holds the future. <laughs> oh, and life is worth living just because he lives. If you don't know, you don't know, you don't know that song, go look for it and, and learn the lyrics. Beautiful. We have hope for tomorrow. Glory be to God. Are you listen to me? So now, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 8. It's going to tell you that, okay? So hope gives us, you know, an armor. It's part of the armor or the instrument or the equipment for our daily life and living. Hope. Are you listening? Okay. Now, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18 and 19. All right? Hebrews chapter 6. Go there with me right now. Hebrews chapter 6, chapter 18 and 19. All right, hope is, it says that hope is an anchor for our soul. Hope is the anchor for our soul. Hope is the anchor for our soul. What is your soul? Your soul is your, your six senses, they say. Okay, that is your feeling, touch, and seeing, and all those good stuff in, that pertains to your life and godliness. On this practical daily life you are living today. Okay, you are engaging all these things in your life. It is your anchor. It, it, your, the, the, it's your, the, the Bible says that it, the anchor holds. All right, your anchor, it's connected. You know, ships, ships when they come to dock, they, they anchor them to this, you know, kind of pillar. All right, this. <laughs> uh, a buddy of mine sent me a WhatsApp this morning talking about, I was asking him, he said, hey, I do how are you doing in your your country there? He says, well, I have they've moved me from the pillar to the post. I said, <laughs> oh man, I tell you, I've been moved from the pillar to the post. You know, God bless you, Bronxy. God bless you. He said, they moved me from the pillar to the post. I said, well, 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 you're still at your post then. That's what it means. You're still at your post. Glory be to God. You got listen, that's good in every everybody. You gotta look for it. Amen. And so, and so, um, uh, hope is also an, an anchor to our souls, according to Hebrews, the sixth chapter, the 18th and the 19th verse. All right, please write it down. Go check it out. Very, very important. All right. We remember we are talking about the three graces of the Holy Spirit. Okay. The Holy Spirit have these attributes. Okay. And that gives to you and I. In this dispensation, because why? We in this life we need faith, we need hope, and we need love. We need it. These are the eternal ingredients that is going to be in us forever. We're gonna we're gonna need it, and we need it. If now take these three things out of your life and see what else do you have. And this is the practical Christian life I'm talking about. Take them out of your life. And see what do you think you have? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Empty. Nothing. The dead don't have no hope. The dead cannot speak of any faith or demonstrating any faith. The dead cannot love. Are you listening to me? So you living and breathing and seeing and feeling and hearing and touching and speaking. That is the 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 um, the the the, the, the uh, what what constitutes your soul, your mind. If you are that person and you don't have these three areas of your life, three ingredients of of the or the three graces of the Holy Spirit, then I don't know who you are and what you what you standing for. Then I don't know. And so you have to understand that I'm talking, not talking about some theory stuff and uh, some religious stuff. I'm talking about the practical ingredients, practical tools 
for your daily life and living as a Christian, a follower of Christ. That is who a Christian is. So if you say you are a Christian, you are a follower of Christ, then therefore also receive that which Christ has promised and given. The promise has come. The promise has been fulfilled. Have you received the Holy Spirit? Like uh, Paul was asking some of the uh, disciples in Ephesus, have you received the Holy Spirit? They said, we have not heard about the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? We haven't heard about the Holy Spirit. Well, they were they they had they had been convinced about who Jesus was, and they were they have received that, and they were out there talking about <clears throat> receive Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life, and all that. But they have not received the Holy Spirit. Why? Because they haven't heard about the Holy Spirit. Have you heard about the Holy Spirit? Have you, beloved? If you are not, I'm here to announce to you that Jesus has sent the Holy Spirit back to you and I. How oh, glory be to God. He says that the Holy Spirit will help you. He's our helper. Which area of your life do you need help? Which area of your life do you need help? The area of what? Your finances? Oh, trust me. Trust me. Believe, I mean, the Holy Spirit will do it. The area of what? Your marriage? I didn't understand this before. But I'm telling you, it's so solid, so solid in me that you can't take it out. The Holy Spirit will help you. Your education? Oh, I didn't know that either. The Holy Spirit will help you. Your business? Boy, I just spoke to you about that. That the world don't know the Holy Spirit. And you must know the Holy Spirit and you know the Holy Spirit and you are going in there to engage in business with the world who do not know the Holy Spirit. You must have an, a good understanding of how to deal with them. The Holy Spirit will guide you if you engage the Holy Spirit. Now, one thing I want you to understand that he doesn't force himself on you. Are you listening? When Jesus told the disciples to wait, the Holy Spirit came upon them, but they waited for the Holy Spirit. They were in anticipation of the Holy Spirit. Are you expecting the Holy Spirit? Do you do you want the Holy Spirit? The other day we, we, we checked the scriptures and we saw that where even the people, some people who are operating with demon spirits even wanted the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine how glorious and how wonderful is the, is the Holy Spirit? The power that he, he gives. Jesus says that wait for the Holy Spirit and when he comes, he will, he will give you power. Power. Power to do what? Power to live your daily life and living. Power to, to win. Power to engage. Power to excel. Power to make it. Are you listening to me? Power. Holy Ghost power. I'm telling you, when, when they are saying no, the Holy Spirit says yes. Come on, before you know, you bulldoze your way through and they wonder, how did, it, how did he do it? Yeah, let him go and ask the Holy Spirit. And by the way, do you think anybody can stop the Holy Spirit? No, you. Oh, glory be to God. The Holy Spirit, are you listening to me? So we need the Holy Spirit going to end here. Okay, we need the Holy Spirit in every area of our lives. We need the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit, okay, radiates faith, love, and hope. And so we'll continue, God willing, tomorrow, same time. I want you to know that these are the three graces of the Holy Spirit. And so you need the Holy Spirit. Now, how do I get the Holy Spirit? Beloved, let me say this. Let me say this, and I'm going to say it with all boldness. You, you cannot bypass Jesus and receive the Holy Spirit. Now, who actually gave the Holy Spirit? Jesus is working. The Holy Spirit is working through, or Jesus working through the Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. Are you listening to me? Lord Jesus, I need you. Well, you need, you need him. He is going to, he is going to answer. He is going to help you through the Holy Spirit. Through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who's going to help you and I. All right. Look at look at this scripture. Look at the scripture again. 
Look at the scripture. Look at Hebrews, okay, chapter 12. Let's go there again. Hebrews, the 12th chapter. Hebrews, the 12th chapter, verse 2. <clears throat> Hebrews, the 12th chapter, look at verse 2. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Look at Hebrews, the 12th chapter, verse 2. Look at it. Look at that. Looking unto who? Jesus. Looking unto who? Jesus. All right? Yes. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. I mean, the joy before him, he knew. Oh, glory be to God. He knew the end. Watch this. Despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He's sitting at the right hand right now of the throne of God. That's where he is. So now you pray to Jesus <laughs> and Jesus asks the Holy Spirit who is now here on earth with you to help you. So you must know who the Holy Spirit is. If not, how can you know your helper? If you don't know him, how, how do you know, how do you engage him to help you? So you don't talk to the Holy Spirit. Have you talked to the Holy Spirit this morning? If you don't know him, have you talked to him? There is a book, I believe, um, um, I understand, um, uh, I haven't, I haven't gotten it yet. Um, I understand uh, um, Pastor Benny Hinn wrote that book, I think. I, I, I'm yet to you know, to confirm that, but I'm just saying this, all right, so please, if I'm wrong, don't hold on, don't hold me to it. Um, the title of the book is Good Morning, Holy Spirit. Good Morning, Holy Spirit. Uh, check that book out and uh, and read it. I believe it's going to help you. Good Morning, the Holy Spirit. Beloved, have you spoke to the Holy Spirit this morning? Have you spoke to Him? If you haven't done that, you see, why I'm saying that you cannot bypass Jesus you know, to receive the Holy Spirit, like somebody came to me the other day, all right, want the Holy Spirit, but they haven't received Jesus as their, their Lord and Savior. No, you can't do that, okay? You cannot, you know, go from, um, 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 uh, what do you call it, stage one to stage two. I mean, you can't jump to jump to um, stage to stage two. You didn't start from, you know, of, of you all of a sudden you want to go to fifth grade and you didn't go to first grade it don't work like that you understand it didn't work like that i mean look at the process in which jesus was even born and look at the process that he went through until he's now seated at the right hand of the throne of god doing what also making intercession for you and i the bible says so you need you to receive Jesus as your Lord and face it and Savior. That's the first thing you ought to do. All right. So let me pray with you if you are one that that person right now. Bishop R.T. Jones, God bless you, my good brother. Um, Diana, God bless you. Amen. God bless all of you. Do me a favor, share this broadcast to your friends and loved ones. Touch somebody and and uh, let them be blessed as well. All right. All of the information that we you need to contact us, uh, me personally. Um, in you know, this ministry is scrolling right now on your screen. Get that information. You can go to the website for more information, www.patrickquenoministries.com. All right, on Facebook, Twitter. Listen, we are live right now, instant live on Facebook, Twitter, Periscope, um, YouTube, and, and all that, live. So if you can catch me um, on YouTube, at a time um, 10 central or uh, which is 2 p.m. GMT uh, in case you are on YouTube just stay right there and just look for you know just you know get get the notification stay right there you will see the broadcast you don't need to come to uh, Facebook if you are on on Twitter stay right there at the time of the broadcast you can see it right instantly all right so there's instant we are instant right now on all the social media live. God bless you. Give your life to Jesus today. Receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit 
if you are that person let me pray with you right now just say listen lift up open up your heart right now okay exercise your faith right now in this prayer you want jesus you need jesus trust me beloved without jesus i don't know how you're going to make it because gee because the holy spirit will be activated in every area of your life through jesus are you listening and so pray this prayer with me by faith say lord jesus i thank you for hearing this message indeed i am a sinner I surrender my life into your hands. Forgive me of my sins. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart and my life and take possession of me. Baptize me, Jesus, in the Holy Spirit and with fire. Let me see you the way I'm supposed to see you. Let me know you the way I'm to know you and use me to fulfill my assignment help me to fulfill my assignment on this earth jesus i thank you amen listen if you pray that prayer right now by faith all right you have received jesus as your lord and your and your savior you are born again yes hallelujah you are born again because it's a spiritual birth spiritual birth it's not about like nicodemus didn't have understanding okay he was a learned educated person but he didn't know that jesus was talking about spiritual